Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the DVC Show. I am your host, Paul Krieger, and I'm joined this week by my lovely wife, Amy Krieger. Hello. We've got John Sakari, a.k.a. Big Fat Panda, in the house today. How are you? Jeff Haslam coming from like 15 minutes up the road. We should really just start meeting up and being in the same room for these. I kind of agree with you, yeah. And then we go get beers. I like it. Sounds good. Yeah, or beers during. I mean, that could make the show more lively. You never know. And then if we're having beers, then Derek's definitely going to just show up wherever that's happening. So Derek yeah. DeBoer, Senior Sales Associate at DVC Resale Market. Hey, now. <laughs> what was that voice? I don't know. It was like, I a, think hey, he's now. already had the beers. <laughs> I was, <laughs> was going to add something to it, and I said, no, I'll just keep keep talking. I think this is the seventh show that we've taped today, so that's why. Seven, third, <laughs> you know, who's counting? Uh, Math but, is hard. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us for this week's episode of the DVC show. As always, if you love our content that we have here at DVC fan, please show some love for our sponsors over at the world of DVC DVC resale market, where you can buy a Disney vacation club resale contract, or if you're looking to sell your contract, they can help with that Monera financial where this one works right here. She can help you with financing that Disney vacation club purchase and then DVC rental store where I, actually work uh, where you can rent out points if you're looking to save some money versus paying direct Disney prices or if you've got some extra points this year and you want to rent those out for some cash. But please show some love for our sponsors. But thank you again for joining us and thank this amazing group of people who's put up with me for the past three hours tonight as we filmed some of these shows. Uh, we are in the home stretch though, so this is the final show we are filming today, so you can tell we're all a little bit more excited by that. Um, and this show's topic is one and done Disney dining locations. So not a place that you're going to be going back to anytime, probably in the near future. And we're going to go around the room and talk about uh, each of ours probably once or twice. We'll see how many we get through tonight. I'm sure we might overlap some because some are just across the board Nobody is going to want to go back there, but uh, it, it's kind of fun to get some differing opinions. Uh, we've got some different palettes here at the table, and I'm going to start with Derek DeBoer uh, and see what his dining location that he's not going back to is going to be. Easy. When you told me the topic of this show, because it was so frequent, I did it about a month or so ago for the very first time, was excited because I'd never been. It's a new restaurant. Uh, we were able to snag a reservation relatively at the last minute, so like 11.30 in the afternoon, right when this restaurant opened. I could not tell you in enough words how much I hate Space 220. <laughs> Space 220. <gasps> I despised it. I despised the whole check-in process from the beginning, waiting outside, and it was just very, very disorganized. And yes, it's cool. You go in the little elevator, and it takes you to the top, and you walk into the room... And it's neat. I mean, with the big wall, it's basically just a big TV screen. But the vibe to me felt like I was in like a hospital dining room is what it kind of felt like to me. And then you get to the food and the food. I mean, the calamari was fine. But again, you have to order this whole pre-free menu. So you get an appetizer and then you get an entree. I think it was 55 or 60 bucks. So I got calamari that was fine from a bag and then i had this steak with apparently some kind of chimchurri sauce on it it was inedible my kids literally just stared at me and said dad are you not gonna eat anything and i said no i'm at epcot i will not eat this i will eat from the food booths around during the food and wine festival instead i just was so disappointed so when i knew this was a topic i could not wait to say one and done forever for me for space 220 service I'm was great service was fine but the, I, oh, horrific horrific i'm, I'm gonna get panda to chime in here because he seems super sad that this is the case but i want yeah, to say yeah. real quick that i think you are in good company derek and i say that because of our experience mm -hmm. at space 220 and the gentleman that we saw leaving space 220 that did not seem all that thrilled with his dining experience. And that was Good. the one, the only Bob Gurr. And oh, we were there around the time oh, oh, oh. that, uh, that, that space 220 had opened. I think it was within a week of, of its opening. 
And uh, Bob was headed down on the elevator with us. And let's just say he did not, I, I'm not speaking for him, but he made some comments there that made it sound like he was not a fan either. Okay, good. Good. Panda? I, I haven't been in about six months, but I the two times I've been there, I've loved it. I loved the Why? trip up. I loved the inside. Uh, the food I got was we okay. I usually started off with the fried cauliflower, which I thought was great, and then we get a burger, which was up there with one of the best burgers I thought I ever had. Now it's important to know also it's Patina Group, so it's the people that do Tutto Italia, Maria yeah. and Enzo. So you would think it would be decent, but again, when we say one and done with these things, Disney food changes a lot. Yeah. So it could be that within the last six months, this place is, if you're getting that bad of a steak that was inedible, it's gone down the tubes. I mean, it just should not be that way. They How say, long ago was this? that guy from Derek? the DVC resale market. Let's give them the worst steak we possibly have. <laughs> How, How long ago was this? Like a month ago. Oh, like okay. Ago. No, that's, uh, that does not bode well to me. No, and it's not cheap. That's the point. No. It's not cheap. It's not like you go and you go, okay, it's 15 bucks or 20 bucks. I mean, you have to have now i did have people by the way did reach out to me that heard about my experience and said derek next time don't sit in the restaurant apparently you can go to the bar and you could order maybe just some appetizers from the bar without having to go through the sit whole the whole experience yeah because where you sit is going to change the food <laughs> i i'm completely with you derek i do not love space 220 i tried that steak you're talking about because we yeah. had gone with our friends phil and pauline and in Elaine Edwards and our friend David and and that steak was the worst steak we'd ever tried. I, Good. I'm positive. I feel so much better. And I feel like the salmon smells like a cigarette. <laughs> I <swear. laughs> it, there's just something and, and that's not an often food descriptor you hear is it no. smelled like a cigarette. That's like that's no. a special kind of bad. I think I had lasagna or something back then. That was a long time ago and it was incredibly salty. But we went to the lounge not that long ago, a few months ago. And I didn't love that either. I had the the what was it the were they prime rib sliders? It was just a very strange combination of like a piece of steak with with iceberg lettuce on it like it, i don't know it was just here's, really strange here's where i'll go with the place is that i want it to be good and i wanted this place to blow me away and it suffers from what i would call the rainforest cafe uh the the t-rex problem which is you let the atmosphere overpower the food that's being cooked. So the yeah. food is kind of an afterthought. They get creative and they make it seem space oriented and they make, you know, things bubble and all kinds of fun stuff like that. But they make the atmosphere try to be the what's right. driving the price and what's getting you there. And the food is kind of the afterthought. And for me, both elements are underwhelming. I think there needs to be That's more going on in the restaurant throughout the dining experience, maybe some kind of theme or show that sort of recircles itself, uh, almost similar to what they've done at the uh, Rodeo Roundup Barbecue. You know, there's they, they have a skit that is played out over the course of 45 minutes or so. If you are there longer, you will hear it repeat, but you at least get the understanding of why you're there and and what's going on in Woody's backyard today and and the, you know I don't want to I don't need like Wally and Eve floating by on the screen or that something. would be I don't, cool. I don't know if I want Wally associated with this place <laughs> I'm not quite sure. until until they get their ducks in a row I'm not sure I want I don't I don't want to go there because I don't want do Wally not to associate get... Wally with the cigarette salmon absolutely not I don't, don't do want it. Wally to get Disney canceled and they actually put Wally uh, for I think it was the the arts festival they had like hidden characters in various different places and they had wally and eve on the outside of this place were, yeah. and i was like well that's cool but i don't want him associated with uh, uh mission space which is where he was or this restaurant at the moment so fix it Good. maybe we can talk disney but i have i have full ip rights to wally and i need i need to sort of say something <laughs> jeff uh well sorry and just to your point you know you're talking about had the the rainforest cafe t-rex vibe the difference is those restaurants are definitely geared towards the kids the families right mm -hmm. the the littles that aren't 60 to 70 dollars for a, a forced menu you know mm -hmm. yep yes 
that's that's a big difference. I mean, I don't you'll never catch me in T-Rex ever, but <laughs> at least there's something that it's offering to those families that want that kind of hybrid experience where at Space 220, man, it's it is the worst food in a just sort of okay theme. Jeff, I forgot I to tell you, we're, we're headed to T-Rex for a dining review on Friday that you're going to join us for. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I love T-Rex. I, I do is, too, Amy. It's so cute I in there. Too. Yeah, the menu is huge. There's so many options. I love it. Maybe that's why I don't like it. It's like, I don't Too know. many options. The Cheesecake Factory, you have to scroll through like this, this menu that... This 60. blows my mind, though, just learning more about you and your palate, Jeff, though, because like it's it's the most basic chicken tenders and burger kind of palate. And so like this is your place like this. is your, You're going to absolutely love T-Rex. Now I, I do want to do a dining review with you there. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> he just re- muted himself. For some reason, you just <laughs> I, muted I think yourself. You're on mute. <laughs> but I expect that you threw your hands up in the air in excitement and said, I love T-Rex. <laughs> We cannot hear you now. <laughs> no. Just move your mouth and we'll put words in for you. <laughs> oh, I'm Jeff Haslam. <laughs> I would like the Brontosaurus burger, please, with flaming sparklers on top. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, originally, I was thinking about cutting some of this out, but I'm at least going to oh. keep it through this point at the moment because it's absolutely hilarious. And watching him try to get his sound back on. I think we're being okay. shut down by the Patina Restaurant Group right now. <laughs> uh, I don't even remember what I was saying. It's fine. Let's go. <laughs> we, we made it up for you, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, but Panda, let's, let's kick back kick it over to you now that we've if you're just now joining us folks and you've decided to turn to the 13 minute mark we had a 13 minute rant about space 220 but <laughs> we're headed, headed headed onward and upward uh panda what is one of the one and done disney dining locations for you at walt disney world it turns out it's a few and done because it used to be good the katsura grill katsura grill in japan <laughs> It used to be a great place to go. I would get chicken teriyaki, which was white meat chicken, broccoli, and rice. And it was just a very healthy meal without, you know, being overly processed or anything. And I went recently and I got what I thought was raw chicken, which didn't look to be white meat. Okay. They changed it, let's say, to dark meat. Uh, You know, not happy about it, but okay. And I, I thought it was raw. It was pink. And I sent it back and it came back worse than what I got before. And it looked all pink. It looked all fleshy. It moved wrong on the fork. And I asked the lady, I said, is this normal? And she looked at it and she was like, and I was like, okay, your face tells me this is not normal. Do you want us to try a third time? No, I'm done. Thanks. I didn't even try to get the $13 back. I just left. I, and I, if you see the pictures, you would never want to eat there. It yeah. looked, it was the gro- the grossest chicken I've ever seen. How does it come back pinker the second time? That's even that is I, I almost, <laughs> I, I, I thought I was going crazy. And then, you know what? I looked at someone else's dish that had the same thing and theirs was not pink. So I yeah, realized mm-hmm. it's not whatever the, you know, the sauce. And I, I kept thinking, okay, maybe it's the sauce. So I would cut into the chicken and look and be like, oh no, it, the closer I get, the, the redder it's getting. And then I saw what looked like to be like a, like blood. And I was like, no, thanks. Oh. I know. I remember, I will never- I be back there. I remember you the should post- never have to utter the phrase "the chicken moved wrong" when I cut it <laughs> on the that's fork. Just not, that's, that's, that's a sure not, sign right there. Just not say, one that we up. ever thought. Yeah, yeah. If I ever have to say that, I'm never going back to that <laughs> restaurant ever again. Let me just. I, let me I remember see. the. I remember the pictures you posted, Panda. And if you send them to me, I'll put a couple couple of them up. And I remember okay. I messaged you, and I was like. I mean, maybe they like like you said, maybe they went to a dark meat or maybe it was smoked. But um, now that you're kind of saying that it. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, yeah. And I'll put up a good picture uh, in in the video here as well. I'll send, it to, I'll send them to you. But yeah, if it got pinker or redder as you got more and more inside it. Yeah. That thing was still moving probably when it hit. the. I, I just can't believe that I had warned them, you know, said this is a problem and that it came back that way the second time that. You know, the first time something could happen, some somebody gets thrown off, but for it to come back again worse than the first time is just unacceptable. 
I've never felt like chicken is a hard dish to cook either. Like it's, nah, it's, right? it's either done or it's not. But the thing is that it used to be so good when you went there, you would get like a filet of white, two filets of white meat chicken. And it was just. This reminds me though of uh, one of the first times I was trying to woo Amy Krieger uh, at our dorm room. I decided to buy a cheap $20 charcoal grill at Walmart. And lo and behold, I did not know how charcoal grills worked. But I successfully somehow <laughs> made a burger that was uh, charbroiled on the outside and completely frozen still on the inside, and <laughs> she still ate it because she loved me. But oh, it was pretty bad. And he asked me what I that's thought. That's called. <laughs> it's called romance-induced salmonella. Very. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Well, you're no Bobby Flay, but <laughs> we'll hey, make I'm, it work." I'm a pretty good cook these days. I think so. Jeff, what is your one and done Disney dining location? Yeah, and I'm I'm even surprised to say this because I looked forward to, to it for so long. But last month we ate at La Cellier in Canada at Epcot, and it was horrible. From the service <laughs> to the food to the lack of making up for the service and the food, it was I was really disappointed because I'd never eaten there. It was kind of one of those places that you could never get a reservation to. Now it's really easy, and I think I know why. <laughs> it was not good. Our, my steak came out like it had been sitting under you know, the lamps for a long time. It was cold. All of the stuff that came with it was cold. And to their credit, they took it back and made me a new one. And it, it was like licking a salt lick. It was bad. Oh my God. It was really bad. And it's so, so expensive. It, so it, it was really like we should probably We should probably organize that Epcot food tour that apparently we're all going to organize with the three of our restaurants all being at Epcot, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. And, and we, we had a great, we, we kind of had a, a mixed bag of La Cellier experiences as well. We had a great Me time too. there. The first time we went there, uh, yeah, we went back. The first back, time was phenomenal. We went back and just not the same, didn't, mm -hmm. didn't hit the same expectations or anything. And I think these restaurants suffer because they are in a theme park uh, and that kind of downgrades the experience. It's the same reason why I'm not going to go to Monsieur Paul, which is now trying to charge like $250 a head for a really fancy meal. Uh, because at that point, like it, it, I feel like it should be in a resort versus being in a theme park. I feel like those type of re those restaurants fall into like two different categories. Uh, and if I'm paying $250, I'm probably going to go to Victorian Alberts or some, something maybe even off property, like at the four seasons, if you're paying that much for a meal as compared to something in a theme park. And there are that the prices can get up there at Le Cellier too. I imagine that meal was not cheap, um, that you had Jeff. So yeah, we were doing the Eat to the Beat concert dinner package. And mm. I think, I mean, honestly, it was a bad night, too. I think too. our server made it very clear that he was really, really excited. As it was his last night ever, and he was oh moving God. back to wherever he came from. <laughs> but he must have mentioned that six times. It's like, I, I'm out of here, and I'm so excited about it. And I'm like, and did you spit in my food on the way out? Because <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, my God. This has just turned into, like... Not the show that I expected, but the show I've always wanted in my heart. Like when it comes to just crazy Disney dining stories. Amy, what is a one and done Disney dining location? Uh, I don't have anything crazy, but uh, Kate May Cafe used to be one of my favorite places ever. I just, I love the all you could eat crab legs. They used to have really good pastas and things. And I love just everything about it. I just loved all that, all you can eat seafood. And since, since Disney's reopened, since the pandemic, uh, they, you know, they brought it back first as like a family style. It wasn't that great, but you could add a lobster and we did have it a mm -hmm. little pricey, but it was a really, it was actually a really good lobster that one time that we had it. Um, the crab legs to me, I just think are too expensive for what you get. You know, it was just, I love, I love it when they're, they're all you could eat, but I'm not skilled enough to get enough out of like a pound but now they reopened it it's a buffet uh we went there i don't know it, it's been a few months or so but just not the same there's just no feature item you know what i mean there's just no mm -hmm. reason to go I, I can't even tell you one thing that i ate i just it was that unmemorable and boring yeah there's there's 
a miss there ever since they removed the crab legs. That was kind of the draw. You know, the unlimited crab legs. You didn't care what you were paying for unlimited crab legs at that point. You just went and you ate unlimited crab legs and you had the greatest time ever. And any of the other foods that were there within the restaurant were sort of secondary. You didn't care if they were kind of bad because you were eating your weight in crab legs and that's what mattered. But now, without those star of the show, or without that, or with that star of the show costing you an extra thirty dollars for like two clusters of crab legs, it needs something else. I would almost say throw the characters in there that they have in the morning, and and make it a character dining restaurant. And maybe that saves it, and maybe that justifies the price. Uh, but I don't no. know that the right kid- now it's like a seafood chef Mickey's. If you did that, like it's just not there. The food is yeah. not there. People like chef Mickey's. <laughs> Some people do. That's true. But yeah. Oh, I, and the, I'm sorry. the problem too with Cape May Cafe is it smells like they've been serving unlimited crap legs for <laughs> 40 years. And so even at breakfast, for people even like breakfast. my girlfriend that don't like seafood, they're not going in. Yeah. So true. <laughs> Same horrible smell. None of the crab legs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I was actually surprised that that made your list because it made my list. Uh, and that was because like I your beloved it so much. And they just like broke my heart. <laughs> that and also uh, people will see that probably by the time this video goes up, you will have seen that the boardwalk deli sandwich that Amy has dreamt about <laughs> and fascinated over no, on these shows. On the it has changed. We are oh, in the market what? for a new best sandwich at Walt Disney World. We'll talk so. about it later. Yeah, that's oh. too soon. She'll yeah. start. That's a legendary again. sandwich that she's talked about for a long time. It's gone. It's just they. Why okay. they get rid of it? Side rant. They. So it used to be. It was just this this really good bread. I know Derek made fun of me because I was like, it's soft and crusty. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, uh, it had this pesto and this mayonnaise and it was just so good. Like all the flavors just really worked together and it was made to order. And now, first of all, now they do have an Italian sub still. It's completely different. The bread has changed. It's like this longer, harder French roll. So it's the kind that's kind of hard to cut through, kind of hard to bite into. And there's a bit of a chew to it. They're they're serving the same sandwich upstairs in the Carousel Cafe, like a pre-made grab and go, grab and go. So it's just it's like pre-made grab and go not made fresh anymore. They, They took away the pesto. They took away the mayonnaise and they're serving it with. Uh, a red wine vinaigrette that has zero flavor. There's no flavor on that. Like you can't even, I don't even know if it was there. Um, so it's just, it's not the same. They've also broken my heart. I don't know how much more I can take. <laughs> <laughs> the magic like is ruined. Like that. This, this show <laughs> took a dark turn at that, at that moment. Um, I don't know how I, I don't know how I beat that, but if anyone has seen uh, the recent review that, Lovely Jeff Haslam and I did at the Turf Club restaurant at Saratoga Springs. That is one that I don't think I will be going back to all that all that soon. Um, some amazing desserts. If you're looking for like maybe just like a cocktail and, and a late night dessert or something, I will say that the desserts that they served us uh, were kind of, they, they, they hit the mark and they were special. Now, Paul, here's something interesting. When did you go to Turf Club? Three weeks ago. Yeah. Okay, they by within a week or two they just changed the head chef, the person, the guy I forget oh, his name no. who was at <laughs> Flying Fish, went to Turf Club. I heard. So this shows you just how it, it this is all moving because next year you could think Turf Club is like your favorite restaurant because it really depends upon these you know creative people in these yeah. roles and what mm-hmm. they what they bring to it. Well, and and the thing you, we said in the review was the fact that. I don't know that they have to do good food here because it's kind of that place where if you need a last minute reservation, it's always going to be there for you. And if you're staying at, at, at Saratoga, it's always going to be there for you. But I, I have questioned whether or not like Disney's done it on purpose, like in just not making this place the greatest restaurant because they know that how are you going to compete with Art Smith's Homecoming and the Boathouse and, you know, you name it over at Disney Springs that is a walk away or a quick boat ride away or a bus ride away. You just can't. Like, you're not going to compete with those restaurants. So why don't we just serve some mediocre, 
Applebee's quality food or something. And Panda, do you don't know insult if, Applebee's? I'm sorry. <laughs> do you know if the menu's changed yet? I don't think it's changed yet, but I'm okay. sure it's coming because usually when the head person changes, yeah, the menu changes. Yeah. And now who knows what's going to happen to Flying Fish also after this guy leaves? So. Yeah. Well, if Flying yeah. Fish's chef is headed there, then that's that's a good sign for things to come for the turf club and we will definitely have to give it another shot. Um, yeah. It was not like it was edible. It was fine. It's just when I think about it's always that that Disney calorie discussion in my head is like, oh, I could have eaten this instead and I would have been much happier with myself. It's, it's that <laughs> yes. constant. It's that constant consideration of what what I could have had versus what I just ate. And I feel yep. like that's that's kind of what drives that review of that restaurant. So, um, but for for me, one and done. Except we'll probably do it again next year to see uh, what 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 transpires if they do come up with a new menu. They just rolled out a new menu at uh, Artist Palette, so maybe they're just trying to revamp the the whole place over there. They've I, not a new menu, but a couple new menu items at Artist Palette. So uh, a couple things like that. Derek, round two, ding, ding. Uh, let's find another 20 minutes that we can spend on on your, your second choice of the night. <laughs> yeah, my next one is Space 221 Restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Just opened up. And it's with the chef from John's uh, uh, Chicken Teriyaki. Now, uh, I'm going to go with another place that I think is incredibly overrated that is very, very hard to get into that has the here's your menu, pick one from each of these things that I feel like they, they do these because I feel like they could just make a ton of stuff and it's served to you almost instantaneously. So it's not like you're picking off the menu. Uh, it is the Be Our Guest restaurant at the Magic Kingdom. That to me, it was a one and done. I'm just I'm, done. I'm, I'm with food, you. I'm with you on the that. The food was nothing better. It, it felt like I was on a cruise ship. And as I did like a hundred cruises, uh, I know what it's like to eat on, on a cruise ship, but a cruise ship food was phenomenally better than this. It was like, what's your appetizer? Boom. Here it is. Two minutes later is your appetizer. Then your entree, as soon as you take the last bite of the appetizer, there's your entree. And then what do you want for dessert? Boom. There it is. The three pre-made dessert sample platter, whatever it is. And here it is. Here's your bill. It's 85 bucks or whatever it is. <clears throat> it's insanely expensive, incredibly overpriced. Uh, we happen to be not even in, cause I think everybody knows there's like different rooms in there. I think there's three different ones, but we had like the worst one that you could possibly get, right? You know, the one that just <laughs> felt like a regular restaurant. Uh, it wasn't like the cool dark room or the beast castle. So it was like blah food, super expensive. And again, as a parent, I know everybody out there listening, when you look at these things and say, yay, I snagged a Be Our Guest. Okay, I'm a family of four, right? So I'm dropping, you know, say 80 bucks or whatever times four, plus you got the tip that you have to put in there. It's not cheap. And I just mm -hmm. think like you said, there's way other places that you can go. And maybe that's a thing for a different show is, oh my God, I tried this place and I can't wait to go back. Whereas this, I feel between this and Space 220, Anything I can do to avoid the pick from the following thing, pick one appetizer, pick one entree, pick one dessert. I yeah. will steer clear of them from now on. You, you didn't see me as I, as you were talking, but I was crossing it off of my list because it made it as well. Uh, that is one that I good. think the concept is so good, but the execution yes. has just failed over the years. They've tried to reinvent it multiple times, but it nothing is. It is, was so much better when it was a la carte. And you could yes. order what you wanted. I, I thought the lunch items were great. Now the lunch and dinner are the same menu and the same price. Like that's, yeah. yeah. But like like Derek said, when your food comes out as you're ordering it, I'm suspicious. Yeah. How, you, I just told you what I wanted. How is it here already? Some You yeah. have to make me wait 10 minutes at least. <laughs> I'm, sus I'm suspicious. At least wait 10 minutes and then bring you raw chicken. I'll at least I'll at least have hope then that maybe it's good. Yeah, but when it comes yeah. out right away, you're like, no, I know what's going on here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, catering. No. Yeah. Poor be our guest. It, such a such a great venue too and a great great idea, but kind of missed the mark. Uh Jeff, what is what is number two on your list? Um, so this was another one that I used to really like. Uh five, six years ago when we first ate there, it was it was amazing. But 
I've given it three more chances, and that was two chances too many, and that's Chefs de France in Epcot. Aww. I must just hate Epcot, but <laughs> it used to be so good. And the last, especially the last time, we all just walked away going, "That was that was worse than Applebee's." Sorry, Panda, but it was it was awful, <laughs> awful, awful. Wow. We've, we've what ripped did you have? Apart, we've ripped apart Epcot. We've uh, ripped apart Applebee's. We had pr- between the six of us, we pretty well covered the menu. I had a steak. I think yeah. somebody had the, the fish or the salmon, whatever the catch of the day was. We we pretty much did everything that there was to have, and nobody was happy. The best thing wow. they ever did at Chefs de France. Oh my goodness! Bring it back. Was at Food and Wine Remy. Festival. Oh. They had the Saturday. It was like the Saturday brunch that they had, and it, they only did it for like two years. You want to talk about a mad dash rope drop? The people, like th- these people, were next level running. Because was, they did not yeah. accept reservations. It was like a buffet of croissants and cheese and just all everything kinds you of, would ever yeah, want. Yeah, all life. kinds of things. And they haven't done it since you know. It's one of those things they got rid of. It's like if they, you had the the case at the Boulanger. What, what's the patisserie? Patisserie yeah. Boulangerie. It's it's as if the case was wide open and you could like shop till you drop, like whatever you wanted for <laughs> like forty five bucks. That was the best thing they ever did, I think, at Chefs de France, and they never brought it back because mm. they're they're probably still working their way out of the hole that people ate them into uh, by, that, <laughs> by that idea. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just I've I've been to Paris. I've eaten Parisian food, and if that's what they're going for, man, that's it's like Space Two Twenty trying to sweep food. Not even, not even close. <laughs> Panda, Panda, what is the what second you- restaurant that you won't be coming back to pretty soon? Again, it's one I, I loved. So when we say one and done, it's one and done because it's it's made us angry once. But Ohana's breakfast. I guess maybe experiencing Topolino's has uh, destroyed me because I love it. Because Ohana's breakfast, I found some things were inedible. The eggs were like powdered eggs. The service was horrible. We They just sat us down. I could have been off the street, walked in, sat down. They would have just thrown a platter at me. They don't even tell you what it is or no waitress or waiter talks to you. It was, and it was a big family that we did it with. And everybody was like, what is up with this food? The waffles were old and I don't know the whole thing, but the eggs being inedible was just, it it was like cutting through cream cheese to to eat your egg. And I was like, this isn't a real egg. Why are they doing this? So Ohana's breakfast. I can't, the characters were great, but the food was bad. Can you ask for the noodles for breakfast? (laughs) I wish yeah. I would. Do, I would have did that. That's a bummer. We yeah. were just out of Hana. We've I've, we've never done breakfast there though. Never done breakfast. But we, how was the dinner? It was good, and we have I have like crapped on Ohana <laughs> multiple times, and we we actually had a really good experience. So yeah, but, okay, that's good to know. But no, we've never done breakfast there, so that's disappointing. Remember breakfast the line I, from the movie: Ohana means powdered eggs. Remember the line. <laughs> I didn't expect it at that level. Like I'm, I'm again, I'll go back to Topolino's, which to me is the best breakfast mm-hmm. on property. Yeah. Uh, but even chef Mickey's food was better than Ohana's, which is just weird. Amy. So, yeah, I, I actually was the, I thought of one cause someone said, it. I think Panda said it, but Maria and Enzo's is <laughs> probably one of the worst meals I've ever had on property. Yeah. Uh, we, when whenever we went there, I just it was such a regretful dinner. I think we looked at each other <laughs> and we were like, we could have went to Olive Garden for half this price and had a Soups much salad and breadsticks all day. Match, yeah, a much better meal. And I I got some kind of I think it was like scampi, uh, and I know scampi typically has lemon in it. I'm not a huge lemon fan, but typically in scampi it works. They use lemon oil, which oil of anything is a very potent flavor and it was the most intense lemon it was so bad and then paul's pasta was was fluorescent orange yeah i got the bolognese and this thing came out like fluorescent orange like there is no (laughs) tomato that is this color like you you had to have taken the orange food coloring and dumped it into the sauce to make it this color. Uh, and it was not the lighting. Like this, I, the restaurant actually had very good lighting. doesn't need to be a specific color. I don't know why they would do that. I, 
Yeah. It w- yeah, it was something it, and it, again, like the bar for me with Italian is like, if you beat Olive Garden, I'm going to be happy. Like I worked there for several years. So like I have an emotional attachment to it, I guess. But like <laughs> unlimited soup, salad and breadstick, you know, tour, tour of yeah, Italy. The soup and breadsticks is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, like, so that's where the bar is set. But <laughs> okay. I, I also. Olive Garden is not that great. But <laughs> for what you pay, it's much better than <laughs> Maria and Enzo's. I'm taking myself to Olive Garden by myself now. Right. <clears throat> we need a sponsor for the show. Come on, Amy. Jeff, Jeff's, Jeff's muted himself again, but he's he's saying that he would love some soup salad and breadsticks himself, and he hopes to have the invite of me since Amy does not want to go on. Now, and now he's so. now he's just so I angry. Right. I, he's so. I angry. think it was his connection that was. Yeah. It, he's so angry at the hatred that Amy had uh, for for Olive Garden that that he decided to leave us uh, on that topic. But yeah, no. Um, the it, the overall experience at Maria and Enzo's just was not what we wanted it to be. So yeah, you know, uh-huh. I, I give up. Hey. Hi, Jeff. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what is going on over here. Yeah. You got to put more gas in your computer, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I'm not empty. So. All I was saying is it's... I want breadsticks now. That's all I was saying. It wasn't even that funny. Let's go. <laughs> right after this is done, you and you and me, we'll meet at the nearest Olive Garden and we'll tear some up. Hey, hey and, and come on. Can I just and add? Panda. Pa- Panda, you can come, but you've got like an hour and a half drive. Oh, for <laughs> breadsticks, I'll. That's okay. <laughs> I just want to add one thing that I know the whole point of the show is to talk about our one and dones, uh, but truly it's still possible to go to Disney and find a place that you've never been and have an amazing experience. Like I did yes. at, at Skipper canteens. Absolutely yes. loved it. Love being able to go order off the menu. <laughs> it was great food. They had a great Kungaloosh beer that you could get to get out of the heat from the Magic Kingdom. The service was phenomenal. The atmosphere was great. But that's one of those things where it's like sometimes if something is hyped up so much, it's like I thought my life was going to change when I got on that fake elevator going to outer space and I wound up just getting stomach cramps. So <laughs> here to be able to find a place like a Skipper Canteens and to have an experience to say, that's an honest to God Disney restaurant that I can't wait to go back to because I feel like so many times when people give Disney dining reviews, it turns out, hey, how was such and such? And, and the response was, it really wasn't that bad. But like, that's acceptable here when people are spending 30 to 40 to $50 for an entree. So again, the right places are out there and treasure those places and pray that they never change. Right. And- just to end this on a positive note, yesterday right. we went to Hollywood, Hollywood and Vine, that buffet in uh, Hollywood Studios, mm-hmm. and it was the Halloween theme. I honestly expected to like one of the 10 things. We tasted a little bit of everything. I got to tell you, the food was like really good. Like we were all shocked. We were like, something's got to be horrible. We're like, no. All the meat was good, the side dishes. So Hollywood and Vine, something's wow. going on good over there. That place had the I reputation know, sure. of like Hollywood and slime for the long, longest. I, exactly. Yeah, for years. When I tell you chicken, <laughs> beef, everything hot, good, sweet and sour meatballs, uh, just some rice, the mashed potatoes were the best I've ever had. And everybody at the table said, oh my gosh, these mashed potatoes were like sour cream and onion, but they were real. And they, some somebody put love into them and you could tell. So there's a positive yeah. that- and it, it depends on the night. It depends on the chef. It depends on the Completely. person that's cooking your food that night that decided not to cook the chicken and bring it out to you twice that wasn't cooked. <laughs> I mean, all of those you got the things, photos. All of those things uh, affect the meal, and it could be the greatest restaurant in the world one night and just simply not miss, or just simply not hit the marks the next. So uh, it's not that these people, it's not that these restaurants are are banished forever. Although I think Space Two Twenty is for Derek. <laughs> but but it's it's just the point that right now these are kind of some experiences that we've recently had at some of these places that just have not um, really made us want to go back. But we will go back. We will try it again. I hope it improves. Uh, I love all of the restaurants. And I also acknowledge that, you know, for each person that goes to Disney World, each family has a different palate and each family l- likes these restaurants for different reasons. 
you know, be our guest might be the perfect restaurant for certain families because it's consistent. I know that so and so um, that's a picky eater is going to eat this food because it's a great food. Um, I originally had Chef Mickey's on my list, but I took it off because of that mindset of families love this place because you know you've got a variety of foods. It's consistently terrible, um, <laughs> but you 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 know what you know what you're gonna get, and so to some that's what makes a positive dining experience is consistency, and so that's what some of these restaurants have, whereas others ride these waves of up and down and up and down. And so, um, it's, it's really, uh, it's hit or miss. Uh, it depends on the person, depends on the night. So none of these are necessarily, uh, ones that we're writing off, but, uh, we're just kind of saying not going to go back in the near future, but great conversation. And, uh, I, I thank you guys always for, for joining us, uh, for this round of shows. This was, this was a fun time. And, uh, uh, I really enjoyed it. Hope you guys did as well. And I hope you viewers out there enjoyed as well. If you did love this content, please hit that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel to follow along for more content. We've got videos going up every Thursday now from room tours to restaurant reviews to coming very soon. Probably by the time this is up, we will be back from our DVC member cruise. And we plan to get as much Disney Vacation Club content related to that as possible the end of this month, we've got coming up the grand opening of the Disneyland Hotel out in Disneyland, the new tower out there. We're super excited to bring all of that to you as well. So follow along for that content. And then also join in the conversation at DVCFan.com and within the DVC Fan Facebook group. But that'll do it for all of us this week. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time.